Welcome to Gunfight News. It's news time, everyone. It's news. First bit of news, Zeno's back. Welcome back, Zeno. Uh, is is Nazareth's audio turning to shit for anyone else? Is my audio turning to shit for anyone else? Like, it, it just keeps on no. cutting out for me. I don't know. Okay. That's, that's weird. Um, Charge your headphones. <laughs> oh, I can see why. I can see why. Cool. Yeah. All go. right. Uh, welcome, so welcome the, to Gunfight. You know, I'm your biggest fan, Zeno. Oh. Your fan is pathetic. You just <laughs> point me with how small and weedy your fan and is. And yet, and yet, still your biggest yet one. It's your biggest Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Campaign News for the week commencing the 17th of March, 2024. I am your host, Naz, and I am joined by Thalian and Zeno. How are you boys this week? Can I go back to bed yet? No. Oh, Zeno's much better because the fact he's actually here. It's and true. I am craving some more news. I'm here to satisfy your craving. Let's get you nice and full of news. Let's let's get that news deep inside you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, now just, uh, now just fill me with your hot newsy load. <laughs> I traveled 500 miles to give you this news. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Kanpai Cast. <laughs> yeah, Are you saying it wasn't the best means? <laughs> it's the most usable. <laughs> anyway, let's let's gosh, now that I've ruined everything, let's get into it. Uh, let's see you know, it makes me restart. Um right, so <laughs> Tsunami honors Akira Toriyama with Dragon Ball Z Kai Marathon after we've been laughing about this. Uh, but I mean, mm. it's, it's it's still. I think it's good news overall. This is good news, yes. Mm. Yeah. So I already posted this in the Discord since it happened before recording. Uh, but I still thought it'd be nice, you know, nice to report on. In honor of Akira Toriyama, the late creator of Dragon Ball, Toonami hosted a special Dragon Ball Z Kai marathon. Which I mean, not the best way to. I best not the best version of the show, but um, it's the only way to make it fit into a marathon length. Yeah, yeah. This tribute included eight episodes airing at, from 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Saturday, or effectively Sunday morning. Toriyama, who passed away on March 1st at 68 due to acute subdural hematoma, was celebrated in a private funeral by his family. Renowned for Dragon Ball and its significant impact on manga and anime, including the latest series Dragon Ball Daima, where he contributed the, to the story and character designs. Toriyama's legacy continues to inspire. Boy, does it. Let's not even talk about yeah, all the weird people so. online that are saying Toriyama didn't contribute anything to... Mm. to uh, Good luck. People will just wait, say anything. Wait, what? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I probably, maybe I should have made that a what's Twitter angry about this this week, but I yeah. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, it, that's disrespectful to Toriyama just to, to acknowledge these people. Like, so, I, uh, I mean, no, no, hold, hold on. Like, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Toriyama's works, right? But even I acknowledge the fact that we wouldn't have so much um, niche mainstream anime pop culture without him. Like, even mm -hmm. fucking mm -hmm. Dragon Ball Abridged would not exist without Dragon Ball. Yep. Well, even uh, even one of the most celebrated games in, in uh, video games in from the SNES area, uh, Chrono Trigger, had relied yeah. on his character designs, yes. you know? Or yeah. Dragon, uh, Dragon Quest. Yes. Pokemon wouldn't exist if they didn't steal it from Dragon Quest. Uh, Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, so, right. Uh, so new faces in Demon Lord Retry R. Uh, the upcoming Demon Lord Retry R TV anime set to debut in 2024 is bringing a fresh cast and crew under the direction of Kazuomi Koga, with Katsuhiko Takayama overseeing the scripts and Minori Homura in charge of character design. The series will feature a mostly new lineup of voice actors, with Kenshiro Suda reprising his role as Hakuto Kunai. Uh, other cast members would include Momo Asakura, Azumi Waki, and several more. This announcement was accompanied by a new visual, teasing what's to come in this sequel to Korone Kanzaki's light novel series. The manga sequel has been ongoing since March 2020, with the J-Novel Club licensing the series for English audiences. Yeah, it looks like only one Wait. person is reprising their role, and everyone else is mm. being replaced or has not been voiced yet. Which Indeed. is they don't they don't say why, and I'm really curious as to they may like, have what... prior commitments. Uh, I suppose that's possible. 
I don't know when the first yeah. uh, season came out, so I I kind of feel also, like I kind of feel that there's this wasn't exactly a great series. I kind of feel that there there is some sort of like stipulation in in um, Japanese voice acting contracts and things that stipulate like basically if this character comes back, they have to offer it back to the original um, voice actor um, for a decent, um, you know. Um, for, for at least an accurate wage, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, for an accurate wage. Whereas uh, I think in in the states, it, it's just be like, you know, they might have something Depends like that, contracts. but they, yeah, they might have something like that. But it's kind of like, yeah, but we're gonna offer you less money than we paid you the first time. And like, why? Or or the same amount, and and not, you yeah. know. Space Battleship Yam uh, Yamato to twenty two oh five transforms into a TV series. The Space Battleship Yamato twenty two oh five two part film project, initially premiered in two thousand twenty one and two thousand twenty two, is set to be reimagined into an eight episode TV series debut uh, debuting on May 1st on BS11 and May 2nd on Tokyo MX, with streaming options available in Japan. This transition marks a new exciting development for fans of the iconic franchise, further expanding, uh, expanded by the announcement of a new seven film sequel project. Seven, seven films! Film! Seven uh, films. Yamoto Yo Toa Ni Rebel 3199 beginning July 19th. The series continuation underscores the enduring popularity of the expansive universe of space battleship Yam uh, Yamato. God, I keep on wanting to say Yamamoto. Uh, Yamato offering both new adventures and a nod to its uh, storied past. I mean, so apparently mm, these are I'm remakes of the original. What the seven Ooh. films? The seven, or? yeah, the seven films. Uh, so the next project in the, uh, so I think this, the, the the first one may have also been, um, uh, part of it. But it says in the next project uh, in the Space Battleship Yamato remakes, uh, will premiere seven films beginning with the first film Kuro no Shin Shinri Shinriaku or Dark Invasion on July nineteenth. Uh, Yamato Yotoa ni Be Forever Yamato is also the title of the 1980 sequel to the original Yamato anime projects. So, yeah, it looks like they're, it looks like they're just remaking it. Oh, so, yeah, be, be, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. This is the project. So the project is Be Forever Yamato. Right. Rebel 3199. And the, the, the entire project comprises seven mm. films. Right. right. Yes. yes. Okay. And, yeah. Interesting. 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 Uh, so a new cast member joins plus size elf. And the reason I added this one is because of the character design itself, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, the plus size elf anime based on the manga by uh, Synecti Synecdoche has announced the addition of three new cast members, Takahide Ishii, Rena Hasegawa, and Ayaka Fukuhara. They will be voicing the characters Tomo Tomoatsu Naoe, uh, Kuroeda, and Oga, respectively. The story revolves around a massage therapist, Naoe-kun, who encounters a unique patient, an elf named Elfuda, with a particular uh, with a penchant for junk food, leading to unexpected weight gain. This fantasy comedy explores Elfuda's journey to lose weight with Naoe-kun's help. The manga, which started in 2016, has transitioned between publishers and concluded with its eighth volume, while also inspiring a second season manga continuation. The anime is set to be debut this year, with Ayasa Ito voicing Elfuda. Uh, so we've talked about this show in the past, See? and yes. why, how it came about, and, you know, the, the author's struggle with, with mm -hmm. seeing people that are, is was it, it too, too thin? Yeah, he got this, I think so, yeah. this things of uh, seeing people that are too too thin, too skinny, always being featured, and then he wanted to actually see uh, people who would normally be thin and skinny uh, as plus size, but also with the uh, added thing of respect to the actually wanting to get fit again, get slim again, yeah, and see yeah, yeah. a positive journey come from the the, the base state of being a plus sized character. 
Uh, so this is, this is the massage therapist. He looks he looks all right. Yeah, it's he's not skinny proportioned either. He looks like a massage therapist. He's about like yeah, he looks like somebody you'd expect to be to be working in this kind of industry. Um, Work me, daddy. Sorry, what? Uh, <laughs> this is this is Kuroeda. Uh, very mm-hmm. very thick. Very no, very yeah. Thick. I'd say this is a pretty. This is like um. That's that's the, the, the sort of pear shape where they're smaller portions. on top and larger on the bottom. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Totally realistic. And then this is the this. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I'm not going to say this body type doesn't exist, but I mean, I. No. I don't know how you would. Um, I don't know how you would define that, but regardless, I would define that as I'll be in my bunk. Uh, I think. <laughs> okay, that's right. I, I think. I think. I think the the. Um, the definition is uh, mummy. What with um, <laughs> I like to drink, it even says I your like mom right my, there. Yes, yes. yes. I, I like to drink my whey protein with some breast milk. I mean, a breast oh milk. Oh my sorry. god! <laughs> uh, moving on. The boy and the heron soars again in North American theaters. Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki's acclaimed film *The Boy and the Heron* is set to grace North American theaters once more on March twenty second. This return comes with special features, including an introduction by the film's composer Joe Hisashi. Uh, uh, Hisaichi, and a recorded drawing session with the supervising animator Takashi Honda. The film celebrated for winning the Best Animated Feature Film at the 96th Academy Awards and achieving significant box office success in both in Japan and in the US will be available in Japanese with English subtitles and in English dub, exclusively streaming on Max. Is that HBO Max? Yeah. I think it's just Max Max now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Because they've been like merging Sorry. and everything and yeah. mass. Returning the film to theaters and then streaming on this particular streaming service. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine with that. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it did win at the Oscars and it's actually a really good film. Yep. So there we go. Moving on. Uh, the Boy and the Heron English da- dub hits Japanese shores. The Boy and the Heron, the la- latest film from Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki will showcase its English dub in Japan starting March 20th, fresh off its win of Best Animated Feature Film in uh, at the 96th Academy Awards, Miyazaki's creation has also garnered accolades from the Japanese uh, Academy Film Prize, Golden Globe Awards, Annie Awards, British Academy Film Awards, um, and the Alliance of Women Film Journalists. Everyone loves this uh, movie. S- since its uh, opening in July 2023, the film has been uh, a box office success in Japan, selling over one million tickets in its first three days. Jeez! Yeah. Uh, and earning approximately 61 million US dollars, ranking in... Uh, ranking it as the third highest grossing domestic film in Japan for 2023. Mm-hmm. Nothing to sneeze at. I, it's interesting that they're actually showing the dub in, in yeah, I'm guessing theaters. To well, I mean, imagine how many people that are not uh, native, sorry, not uh, yes, Jap- Japanese right. is not their first language, Fair right? Enough. That live in mm-hmm. Japan, you know. Uh, and then those who are, you know, they're learning English and like, yeah, I'd like Wait. to see this. Are, oh. Is is Disney still under? No, they can't. Yeah, actually, that would make sense because Disney owns H. Uh, I think Disney owns HBO Max now, or at least they've merged yeah. together as, as far as streaming yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah. They, so, they've, they've owned so it for a long time. If Disney has put out the dub, which is probably the case, they would have. Uh, people, people like people, regular people in Japan, like actual Japanese people, might be interested in in how you know, the job because they've consistently done pretty good with their dubs and have hired like big name mm-hmm. people and stuff. Mm-hmm. Golden Monster Unleashed, <laughs> the luxurious Godzilla anniversary figure. <laughs> watch, watch, notice me, senpai. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh, we definitely didn't talk about oh, golden figurines in that one. Uh, in celebration of Godzilla's 70th anniversary, U Treasure has released an 18 karat gold Godzilla figure priced at 3.3 million yen or about 28,000 uh, $28, US dollars. This limited edition figure, alongside a silver variant, showcases the iconic monster in exquisite detail, utilizing 3D data and craftsmanship from master jewelers. 
With only seven gold and 70 silver figures produced, they stand as a testament to the enduring popularity and impact of the Godzilla franchise. The gold figure weighs 159 grams, I have no idea what that is in real people units, uh, and comes with a custom Coffee. display case, <laughs> making it a must-have for dedicated fans willing to pay the premium price. <laughs> Does it show the I mean, silver the one? Oh, there's the silver one. Yeah. That's not bad. Yes. I think I'd rather have the silver one, to be honest. No, I don't know. I quite like that gold one. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's just so much money. Yeah. So oh, wait, is there another much one? money. Oh, oh there yes. are more. And that's the case. Yeah, but they are they're quite small, but the um, They are quite small. 159 grams. Uh that's oh like a fifth a bag of sugar. <laughs> Fucking Christ. <laughs> How many like, sheep is that's it? That's just 159 that's grams, so you say? So much money. That's so much money. Oh, yeah, it's going to do that. Grams to, I think, 159 grams. 5.6 Five, 5. ounces. So, yeah, yes. about a third of a... Third of a pound? Uh, <laughs> the latest anime and manga hotness hitting the shelves this past week, which is our regular returning section. So this week's North American anime and manga releases include notable titles, titles such as Akiba Made War and The Legendary Hero is Dead for anime, and the 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. And One Piece Shukageki no Sanji for manga. No, such <laughs> really Shukageki no Sanji was they playing at. So, uh, <laughs> no way the releases are Susume in both standard and limited edition Blu ray and DVDs, priced at $35 and $65 respectively. Manga fans can look forward to the release of The Villainess's Guide to Not Falling in Love among others, offering a wide range of genres and stories for diverse audiences. It's crazy how expensive DVDs have gotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dying, dying medium. Yeah. Well, I, I, I kind of feel like they, they've introduced the scarcity by the fact that everything's on, on streaming, streaming services. Now. So yeah. as a result, it's like, oh yeah, well, we're not printing as much as, it, um, as we used to, so we're just racking up the price. But anyway, I think it's time to move on to the fact or rumor section. Um, Ooh, fun times. Sorry, yeah. Zeno. So, yeah. Call of the Night is getting a season two. And this is a fact, much to my dismay. For better or worse. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Confirmed, Call of the Night is officially getting a season two. This comes after much speculation and excitement within the fan community. The conf confirmation was eagerly awaited, especially since the manga has concluded, leaving fans hopeful for the anime's continuation. With the official announcement, it's clear that the story will carry on, uh, diving deeper into the world of Nightwalkers and exploring more of the manga's content. The first season only adapted a portion of the manga, leaving ample material for future seasons. While specific details such as the release date are still under wraps, the anticipation for season two's adaptation is high, with hopes uh, for a comprehensive coverage of the manga's storyline. This so development... So would you say this is in the same place as, like, One Punch Man Season 3, where they said, oh yeah, there's gonna be one, but they haven't, like, announced anything about when it'll be... Oh, um, uh, yeah, yeah, this it is... It could still fall like, through, I, or, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but they announced uh, a Season 3 of Konosuba, like, I don't know, three, oh, yeah, four years, years ago. ago. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and then it went radio it's silent for God knows how long. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's just move on to the next one. Right, so uh, Dragon Ball... Gonna, no? Are you not going to uh, finish off that bit? No. Fair enough. Oh yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now uh, it's interrupted me. Threw me. Yep, yep. T totally ruined his Yeah, his I hate momentum. it when he does that. And Dragon Ball Daima is coming for fall 2024. This is a fact. I won't let Xeno stop me. Confirmed! Dragon Ball Daima is officially set to premiere in fall 2024. This, unfortunately for Akira Tariyama, he'll never... Uh, but... Uh, this new entry in Dragon Ball franchises uh, was announced with the Kira Toriyama's involvement, sparking excitement among fans for what has been described as potentially Toriyama's final project. The series will air on Fuji TV, celebrating the franchise's 40th anniversary. Um, and I know he he does he did seem to be looking forward to it, so I assume it's going to be mm. good. Well, on a good if you like Dragon tangent. Ball. 
on a minor tangent, did you know the only reason why we have Dragon Ball Super is because Dragon Ball Evolution exists? Yes. Oh sweet. my god, really? Oh, I actually, yes. I actually he, saw um, the... Sorry, I, go ahead. No, go, you go ahead. I'll, finish, I'll, I'll do it after. Well, basically, he saw the film in the cinema. He was really excited. Absolutely fucking hated what they did with the franchise. And then mm -hmm. decided, out of spite, he was going to create... Uh, was it the Battle of the Gods movie? Yes. Um, and then, as a result, that spun up like a whole Dragon Ball Super and everything. It, yeah, it was Battle it, of the Gods. It, it kind of it it got yeah, him it. back into into the whole yeah. swing yeah. of things yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he was, he was uh, really happy with the fact that it came to an end. And then just fucking... Yeah. Yeah. He, the, the he other was not going to let Dragon Ball Evolution be the last of the uh, Dragon Ball franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the other the uh, other thing also, I saw was an image of the director of that saying, you know, responding to Toriyama's death, and it was like um, I don't remember the exact wording, but it was something like, "We're you know, we're sorry to see your passing. You'll be missed, and sorry for fucking up the the, the adaptation so badly." <laughs> <Yes. Yeah. laughs> I'm fairly sure that you can actually apply that to Daimo as well. Daimo exists because he didn't want uh, the uh, only kid Goku thing. You know, after Dragon Ball itself, oh, GT. to be yeah. GT. GT, yes. Yeah. So let's move on to our last one. The Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest is coming in July 2024. This is the fact. Confirmed. The Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest anime is set to start airing in July 2024. The original cast from Fairy Tale will return to reprise their roles, continuing the adventures of Natsu Dragnil and his team as they embark on a legendary 100 Years Quest. Fans can look forward to this highly anticipated sequel, which promises new challenges and adventures for the beloved characters from the Fairy Tale Guild. So, Zeno, are you looking forward to this? Because mm. I know you like Fairy Tale. Well, I liked the first season, but there, there was such a long oh, gap between right. the first yeah, season yeah. and the second season, I couldn't remember what the fuck happened in the second. Uh, though I have heard uh, weird things about the second season, so I might just watch this. I just, I just want to remind all our fans when Zeno says the first and second season, he means like the first however many seasons and then the gap and then when they came back hold on hold on because he, he counts hold on. he counts he counts uh, the continuous running as a single season which is fine it's fine if he wants to do it that yeah. way but that's not one how a lot piece of other people only has one season exactly well, yeah, see, yeah there you go right hold on hold on it has multiple fairy, arts but only one season uh fairy tale uh no, no, Zeno, I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. 75 I'm, episodes. There you go. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying this for, for anyone in the audience that might not count it that way. You know, it, it's fine. It's yeah. fine if you count it that way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that will do it for the news this week. Um, stay tuned later this week for Combat Cast, where we discuss, uh, like, like mostly uniforms and, and how they've changed in, in both Japanese society mm -hmm. and how they've been depicted in anime. And I think it was yes. a very good, very interesting discussion. So, you know, and I only argued a little bit. So, uh, yeah, um, stay tuned. And yeah, he was wrong. Yeah, of course. Uh, stay tuned for that, and we'll see you next time for more news. Bye. News. <laughs>